All right. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Chris, and I'm from the Voltage References and Supervisors product line at TI. Uh, today, I have a lot to cover in the 30 minutes I have, but if there's one key takeaway from the get-go, I'd like you to pay attention to these two URLs. TI.com slash VREF will take you to all the content we have for Voltage References, and TI.com slash SVS will take you to all our content for supervisors on our website. A uh, quick view of our agenda today. Uh, we, Since we have a lot of material on TI.com, I'll try to keep uh, at minimum the overview and kind of use case discussions and do want to focus uh, hopefully more attention on some key products we recently released and then some upcoming products as well. And then I'll uh, close where I started talking about the resources we have on TI.com. All right, uh, this slide here summarizes our portfolio pretty nicely. On the voltage references side, we have two different types, series references and shunt references. <clears throat> series references you'll find driving the reference pins of uh, ADCs and uh, digital to analog converters, whether it's integrated or integrated in your microcontroller or discrete. Uh, so series, will, you'll usually find the highest performance, lowest drift performance that you need for high precision signal chain. And these will be at minimum three terminal devices with a VIN pin, ground, and the output reference. We also have dual outputs as well. On the other side, we have shunt references, which can be as simple as a, a two terminal device that's essentially a, Z, a Zener diode or clamping device replacement, as well as the adjustable versions, uh, which you'll find uh, a lot of the times in your isolated power supply designs. Here's a use case right here for something like a flyback converter secondary side regulated where you're using a shunt reference as your trans impedance error amp with your reference to drive your optocoupler to feed back the signal. <clears throat> uh, references as well, I don't have it shown here, but they're really common in level shifting applications where you have you know bipolar signals from your sensor or other input and you need to bring that up to the common modes of your, your digital to analog converter, uh, your ADCs or other circuits. So references are also used widely there. Now moving on to the supervisors, uh, these come in many different flavors, from basic supervision for undervoltage detection uh, with features like programmable timeout and reset delays, as well as manual reset. We also have uh, devices with uh, window supervision, so that'll do undervoltage and overvoltage detection, uh, which we'll, we're finding more and more important in safety critical applications where you need to meet stringent uh, SIL standards. And then we also have parts with integrated watchdog timers. So instead of monitoring for voltages, this will monitor for pulses from your microcontroller or other FPGA or DSP, making sure your processor is, is uh, alive and behaving as you expect. All right, and the last row here is really um, just meant to emphasize the, the benefits that our portfolio represents in your system. So we're meant to work in a variety of environments with wide VNs, really wide temperature ranges for a really robust system. Uh, really, our devices are building blocks, not really the star of the show, but they're really going to help you achieve the highest performance, accuracy, low noise in your signal chain. And then for battery-powered applications, we have devices that will really serve the IQ requirements of your system. And then we really have, devi we have devices that come in small packages if you're in space-constrained applications. <clears throat> Before I jump into our products, I did just want to highlight uh, some reference diagrams we have on TI.com and where our devices fit in there. Uh, TI.com, if you, if you haven't covered this in previous sessions, we have a wealth of these block diagrams where you can click on any subsystem in the diagram and see the relevant reference designs and products for that subsystem. Uh, just here for e-meters, uh, where we play, our products play quite a bit. Uh, you can see if we're in, the, we're off of a flyback converter offline, you may need a shunt reference for your flyback op op optocoupler. Anytime you have your power supply feeding all the subsystems, you may need monitoring and supervision there. In the critical metrology piece where you need high precision above 12 bits, you know, going into the 14, 18 bits, you might want a external reference for your ADC to really get the performance out of your signal chain there. And then your the brain of your system, your apps processor feeding in the, the metrology information to your comms you may want a supervisor and watchdog to really make sure uh, there's no hiccups in the in the operation. I have a couple more block diagrams, but kind of the same story, where to look for our parts, anywhere you have your power. I don't have it here, but depending on the topology in your PLC, 
input module, you may need a shunt reference to monitor and supervise uh, your processing as well as in the actual signal, anytime you have a signal chain, if you need that high performance, low noise, low temp drift, uh, consider using a external uh, reference. Uh, this is just another block diagram, but the same kind of idea where you would find our parts in such systems. So our parts are used in a wide variety of applications from industrial, automotive, medical, PE. Really, you'll find our, our building block parts used everywhere. Now let's jump into our portfolio, starting with references. <clears throat> this is kind of a rehash of what I've already discussed. Uh, the main applications for our voltage references. So for your precision references for your data converters, helping in your power regulation and feedback path, uh, providing reference for level shifting and common mode biasing, or as a reference for if you're doing a discrete implementation of a detector of some kind, you might want to use a reference. Uh, we can't cover everything in the portfolio, but I find XY chart is the best way to illustrate our portfolio and how it's divided. Uh, so on the X axis here, we have a quiescent current or IQ. And on the Y axis, we have the temp temperature drift in terms of max PPM per degree C. So our portfolio is divided into a low power regime here on the top left where uh, trading uh, trading off on the temperature drift performance and the noise, you're getting low power down to 3.9 microamp, typical 5 microamps for our Ref 33 XX family. We see that a lot in battery powered applications. <clears throat> There's some other uh, variations here where you trade off a little bit more power for a little bit better noise performance and accuracy. On the bottom right, we have our highest precision, lowest drift devices in families like the Ref 50 XX family, where we're at 3 ppm per degree C uh, temperature drift really low noise at three microvolt peak to peak. And this comes in the voltages listed here for your reference when you uh, have these slides. If you're looking for um, helping uh, a little bit easier signal chain design where you want to minimize the design to drive the, to buffer and drive the ADC reference pin, you can look at our Ref 60X family or 6X family, uh, which has the integrated ADC drive buffer. <clears throat> All right. Um, here at the bottom left is actually the part I want to talk about in some detail is the Ref 34 XX family. As you can see on the XY chart, it's kind of positioned in a nice place where it's balancing a power requirements at less than 100 microamp quiescent current, as well as drift and noise performance. Uh, you can see that uh, for a lot less current than our highest performance, lowest drift parts, you're, you're getting pretty close actually in terms of temp drift and noise performance. So that's a really key part we see used in a wide variety of applications. Uh, and the blue outline here is actually denoting what's automotive qualified, AEC Q100 qualified. So this device is also coming in that pack, in that grade. So hopefully this is a good reference for you in the future, but digging into that Rev34 in a little bit more detail, uh, as I mentioned, it's a nice balance of power and performance. Initial accuracy of 0.05%, which is important if you're not calibrating your signal chain. Really good temp drift and low performance at six p ppm per degree C and five microvolt peak to peak per volt in the 0 0.1 to 10 Hertz region uh, for a really nice uh, level of power consumption. One aspect of this device that customers really like is the long-term drift at 30 ppm at 1,000 1, hours. And we actually have extended data beyond this. Uh, so we find this used, it's a great general purpose device as I've mentioned in applications where power is important, maybe loop powered systems, 420 milliamp at less than 100 microamp max, uh, you're not eating into your power budget too much. And then we see this gaining traction in various end equipments, test and measurement, medical, and so on, outside of you know factory automation, field transmitter kind of applications. And this comes in a SOT236 thin package, as you can see here with the pinout. And I just wanted to know, this is something uh, we like to point out, is if you are looking for automotive grade, which uh, we're seeing even industrial cus customers tending to, uh, starting to use the Q100 parts, uh, is that the Ref34 Q1 is actually going to give you a better performance than our Ref50XA Q1. So if you're looking for automotive qualified, this is the, the first part you should consider. 
<clears throat> moving on to the other half of our reference portfolio on shunt voltage references. Again, another XY chart. On the x-axis this time, it's minimum operating current. So this is the minimum current to get a regulated uh, shunt reference voltage. So our portfolio, and y-axis here is the same. It's temperature drift in uh, max PPM per degree C. You'll see we have our, our lowest, uh, lowest minimum current parts down to one microamp in the ref 1112 here on the left. And at the bottom right, our highest accuracy at 0.05% initial accuracy at the expense of a little bit more quiescent current. I'd like to spend most of the rest of this time on, on this slide on this top right red area for our most popular and multi-source products. And this is actually big enough that it, we have to subdivide it further, further with our highest accuracy families like LM4040 and LM4050 N families at 0.1% accuracy. We have our low V out, so 1.24 volt reference uh, devices in the TLV, TLVH, and LMV431 devices. And this is a nice XY chart. All the, all the blocks here you can click and it'll take you to the product folder for your reference in the future. Um, now, this is where we have new products coming out. Uh, actually, they released last year in the red ATL431 and 2 LI and the TL431 and 2 LI. So these devices are redesigns of really legacy parts. I'm sure most of you have heard of this TL431 and 2. Uh, we basically redesigned this from scratch on TI's newest bipolar process. And what that gives us is technology improvements and process flow improvements that really helped us improve uh, specs like the temperature drift. As you can see, they're lower in the chart in terms of temperature drift. Uh, the reference pin current is reduced in the TL431 and 2, and that yields system level accuracy benefits, as I'll illustrate in a couple of slides. And because we're on the modern process with the newest technology, we'll be able to produce these at volumes and get lead times in the 12 week region with these kinds of parts. So those are our newest releases in shunt references. And uh, I won't dwell on these one pagers too much, but key that I just mentioned is the reference pin current. This is at the IREF pin, which is the current into this adjust pin of the, your shunt reference. Uh, this is actually 10x lower than the existing generation at 0.4 microamps versus four microamp max in the original TL431. So that's a key spec to highlight here. Most of the other specs are the same as what you've used in your legacy products, but this will give you higher system level accuracy as I'll show in uh, two slides. The ATL431 LI, it's very similar to the previous device, except this one has a lower minimum cathode current of 100 microamp versus the one milliamp that I mentioned on the previous slide, or I showed on the previous slide. So that's the minimum current to keep the shunt reference regulated. And this will also yield system level benefits that I'll get into in a minute. Um, this is a nice tool you can keep for reference in the future. It's a decoder that'll explain uh, very quickly the differences between uh, the legacy products like TL431 and 2 and the ATL431 and 2 and the newer LI versions. I think I forgot to mention LI stands for lower current, which is really uh, that the reference current specs are tighter and lower. And the cathode current, the max current, is actually lower as well. That's part of the low current part of it. But for the applications these parts are used in, you're really never really pushing it into the 100 milliamp. So 50 milliamps is what we found is more than sufficient for the applications of these parts. And this decoder will tell you uh, what's the difference between the A grade, the B grade, in terms of accuracy, the industrial versus extended temperature ranges, et cetera, to help you decode the part numbers that you'll see like here. So it's a nice uh, quick reference of all these 431 parts, at least the 2.5 volt versions. Uh, just to quickly highlight the system level benefits of these new versions, uh, we have a nice video on TI.com that goes into these calculations in detail, but just to summarize what the benefit is, using the new TL431 LI A version, which is a relaxed uh, accuracy grade of 1%, sorry, right here, 1%, that'll actually give you better performance than the older B grade version with a tighter spec at the system level because of the that reduce reference pin current. So when you factor in how that affects your regulation accuracy, you're actually getting more accurate for a 
lower grade or uh, less accurate grade device versus the previous generation. In terms of power, um, in systems where you need to meet uh, class six, for instance, class six level power consumption in the no load conditions, for example, here for European code of conduct, uh, power adapters with less than 49 watt output in no load or shutdown conditions, your system needs to uh, consume less than 75 milliwatts. Uh, there's a benefit in using the ATL 431LI with that lower minimum regulation, uh, regulated current of 100 microamp, even with the margin here of 200 microamp, uh, that'll help you meet the power consumption requirements to meet those standards. And that same video that I just mentioned uh, covers this calculations and this discussion in more detail. I just wanted to highlight very quickly the benefit there. Uh, last note on references I want to make, which I kind of uh, brought up at the beginning, is that uh, shunt references are, are really good dio uh, Zener diode replacements. So anywhere you want to do a simple clamping of a voltage at a node or uh, low-cost over-voltage protection, using a shunt reference instead of an actual Zener diode may be a good choice, as these will be able to regulate at much lower uh, current for lower power consumption, as well as higher accuracy rating than a actual Zener diode. So these are some parts you may consider for using in those applications. All right, I'd like to spend the rest of the time on our big supervisors portfolio. Um, supervisors come in different names across the industry. You might see monitor as well, voltage monitor, voltage detector, reset IC. These are all lumped together for us under this bucket of supervisors. I think I've covered the use cases already quite a bit, but uh, just to recap quickly, our supervisors are meant to help monitor the critical supply rails in your system and sometimes other signals, not just power. Um, and they'll help you precisely control when your loads and your other power converters will turn on as these are high accurate, um, many with features like power uh, manual reset for external push button override programmable delays if you want to do some sequencing or have a window of uh, startup that you want to control precisely. And they come in multi-channel versions as well, as I mentioned before. Uh, this is a snapshot from our quick reference guide on TI.com, which is a really nice way to see how our portfolio is partitioned. <clears throat> Just starting at the top left on single channel, we have our most commonly used parts, three pin, basic supervisors at the top left. If for battery powered or just low power focused applications, we have our lowest IQ devices that go into the nano amp range. As I mentioned, for safety critical applications, things like safety PLCs or uh, any other application where human operators need to be protected, we see wide usage of our window supervisors, which will do under voltage as well as over voltage detection and these also come in integrated watchdog varieties. So you'll have the window supervision plus watchdog uh, timing as well. We have some parts in battery oaring, so to help you switch from your main power supply to a backup battery if the line goes down. The watchdogs that I just mentioned, and I'll actually get into more detail on this on the next slides. And then some push buttons. Down here at the bottom, we have uh, our families of multi-channel supervision products. So we have dual channels like the TPS 37, 79, and 80 up to triple channel and quad channel with our TPS 38, 6, triple X family. So we see these widely used when your systems have really complex power requirements and you really need to have a close eye on the voltage levels in your system. Okay, now diving into specific products we've recently released. The first one is the TPS 34, 31. This is actually a standalone watchdog, so not a supervisor in terms of uh, supply voltage monitoring. This is really just monitoring the watchdog pulses from your microcontroller, seeing if they're um, not coming at the expected interval. So a standard, we call this a standalone standard watchdog, as this will only monitor for late faults in the watchdog signals from your microcontroller or processor. And on the next slide, I'll mention our other family for our other product uh, for window watchdog. Some key things to point out is the user programmable timeout. So you can actually set what is the timeout window that you want to operate, uh, you want to wait for a pulse from your microcontroller before asserting the flag with the 15% timeout accuracy there. Uh, this comes in a three by three 
uh, vSON 10 package as shown at the bottom right. So, all right. Uh, the other device is a window watchdog, very similar to the previous one, except the window watchdog means that <clears throat> you can program precisely program a minimum time delay from the pulses as well as uh, the maximum delay. This is useful in uh, detecting when you have a runaway processor that might be just sending pulses frequently if it's in the wrong part of your loop. The previous uh, TPS3431 would not be able to use that, uh, detect that as it's only a late fault detector. So this one would be able to do early faults as well as late faults in terms of watchdog detection. Uh, with the same programmable functionality with external capacitors and 15% timeout accuracy. And these are relatively low IQ at 10 microamp, uh, the both of these families. And that comes uh, in the same uh, 3 by 3 vSON 10 package. All right. And I, I think uh, I forgot to mention this, that these uh, standalone watchdogs are finding them gaining traction again in safety applications where and applications where your system is out in the field for 5, 10, 15 years. You really don't want human intervention to to reset or get your system back on track if it's in a hiccup or other errant state. So that's where we see our standalone watchdogs really gaining traction. Uh, now moving on to our one of our new upcoming supervisors. This is the TPS3840. This is actually available on TI.com for samples um, and it'll RTM in a couple of months. So this is our uh, this is going to be one of our lowest IQ supervisors at 350 nanoamp typical uh, with a wide VN range up to 10 volts recommended, but the actual rated max is 12 volts. Extended industrial temp, uh, temp range up to 25, 125 degrees C. Very good accuracy and uh, at RTM we'll release this in six voltage threshold variants, but we'll be able to trim this very quickly for different 100 millivolt step thresholds from 1.6 volts to 4.9, depending on what you need in your system. Uh, this will have programmable delay with an external CT pin with 30% delay time accuracy. Uh, we have some good collateral of, of this part being used in uh, grid applications, so circuit breakers and some material on how this could be used in e-meters, but we see this really having applicability in lots of applications, anywhere you're battery powered with the low IQ is useful, and with a t 10 volt up to 12 volt max operation, uh, for battery powers with multi-cell series, uh, this is another great device to use. All right, and this comes in a SOT23 uh, five pin package. Uh, this is just, uh, I kind of mentioned this just now. Uh, we have some good material on TI.com on, on the use cases for this device, TPS3840. So, as a leakage current detector, uh, we have a nice blog written by our systems engineer there. We have a nice reference design that's showing a variety of use cases for this device as comparator or power sequencer or just basic supervisor. And we have a nice uh, summary of how this would be suitable in e-meter applications. So some good references to dig into. Uh, the last device I want to talk about is the TPS3703-Q1. Uh, this is a window supervisor, so it'll do under voltage and over voltage protection. As I mentioned in the overview, we're seeing uh, really that parts like this are really useful for meeting the SIL requirements of safety critical applications, uh, where you really need to monitor all the supply voltages, make sure they're precisely uh, regulated within certain nominal uh, window ranges. So this device will have 0.9% uh, accuracy across temp, even tighter typical values. And we'll release this in, uh, in a couple of months with nominal voltages from 1.25 up to 5 volts. So 1.8, 1.2, 3.3, .3, 5 volts. Uh, but we'll be able to uh, make variations of this in 50 millivolt steps as shown here. And this will be able to be trimmed for different nominal uh, threshold ranges around the nominal supply from 3% around, say, 3.3 uh, volts up to 7% around the nominal voltage rails. Um, some other nice features of this device are 
there are going to be fixed program fixed delay options as well as programmable reset time delay again with uh, some kind of external cap to program that desired reset time delay and another nice feature of this device that's new for us is integrated reset latching again in safety applications uh, unlike normal supervisors that are uh, assert a reset and go back to normal operation after the time delay latching the reset will actually uh, once you trigger a fault either under voltage and over voltage if you're using uh, this option for integrated reset latching it'll actually just hold that asserted flag until you manually uh, deassert the reset so this is good for safety applications where you you want somebody to you want that flag to be asserted and then you want to manually let the system resume uh, using your your gpio to flag it so this is another device coming out in two months that we're really excited about. We see a lot of interest and traction in various applications. All right, now, uh, just to close on where I started, uh, we have a lot of information about our devices on TI.com, whether it be video training series for both our reference portfolio and supervisors, uh, a variety of reference designs highlighting or featuring our products in various applications, uh, the re quick reference guide that I just showed, the, the power chief for our supervisors is right here. And we have various app notes and TI blogs as well. So again, if there's one key takeaway, if you need to find a reference or supervisor for your design, start here at the ti.com slash VREF or for a supervisor, ti.com slash SVS. That'll take you to the wealth of content we're generating from our team to help support you with your designs. All right, I think that's all I had. Thank you for your time.